Welcome to the Austin P Experience podcast, where we are highlighting why we are the premier university in the region. I will be your host today, Grayson Nicholson. Um, today we have Dr. Stanley Yates with us, the professor of music. Uh, we are kicking off a new year with a new season, um, our second season called In Session. This is where we're going to look at some more of the interesting classes offered at Austin P. Um, so, uh, Dr. Yates, um, I see that you teach a class on the Beatles. Um, right. The Beatles, Music, Society, and Culture. Um, so, it's 2023. Why are we still talking about the Beatles? Well, that's an interesting, that's a very good question because this is um, 60 years ago. So it's really classic music, if not classical, it's classic, it's, it's outlived its, its time, hasn't it? It's, um, it still speaks three, four generations on. So that's a very interesting question and that's really part of what this course is about, trying to figure out what makes these songs so good and so long lasting. Um, and some of that is, is objective, you know, you can look at the melodies and various things and just marvel at how good they are. But it's also, the Beatles were a product of a very special time. So the 1960s were kind of the culmination of, of this kind of post-war period. And it, and it was a decade, well really only about five or six years when it really happened where so much happened in the culture and in society, so much change, so dynamic, so quick. I don't think there's ever been a decade like it. Like it. And that's when the Beatles were doing their thing. And they had such an incredible energy for it. And they were somehow able to channel all of this other energy. And it all kind of got attached to them. But it's a combination of those things, you know, of them being tremendous songwriters and musicians. Uh, and having an incredible passion for it. But also what was going on in society and culture at the time. Those things came together. That's why it can probably not happen again. Right, yeah. You know? Yeah, but it's an astonishing thing. 60 years later, pop songs, pop music is meant to be um, immediately enjoyable, accessible, and here today, gone tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, you know, popular music transcends that. It's still pop music, but it's got something bigger going on as well. So yeah, that's, that's kind of what the Beatles are. It's that combination of, of, of the, the culture, incredible change, lots of stuff going on, and amazing music. Yeah. Can't, can't take away the music. I mean, it's really great. Mm -hmm. So what kind of made you want to create this class? Well, um, I've been interested in the Beatles uh, for quite a bit. Now, um, I think the first musical experience I can remember, and I was only a little kid, that was seeing the Beatles on the TV. And I remember that. And it was just crazy, astonishing, seeing these weird guys with <laughs> the haircuts and everything, you know. It's, it's not very shocking today, but back then it was really shocking. And I, I, I still remember that as the first kind of thing. Now, I was a bit too young to really follow the Beatles all the way through, but they were on the TV all the time. So anyway, they, I grew up with that. And, um, but then as I became a musician myself, I kind of forgot about the Beatles and all that. And then I kind of fell back into them again, uh, back in the 90s when the, the Beatles released all these uh, documentaries and things. And it's like, oh, I'd forgotten about the Beatles. Then I got obsessed with them <laughs> again. So um, at that point, I just um, really got interested in, in the songs. It's like, what is it with these songs? You know, how good they are, what's going on? And, um, you know, we teach courses in general classical music survey courses. We do a general popular music survey course. But it's like, we could do all of this stuff specifically just on the Beatles because there's so much that they did and the music's so good. So it's kind of been in the back of my mind. And finally, I, was, I got an opportunity, you know, to, to, to teach it. So um, I developed the course. And uh, I've taught it twice. The first time was online because of the lockdown, mm -hmm. not ideal. But I got to teach it in person last semester for the first time, which is great. So yeah, that's, that's that. So is the class more so like music focused or you talk about other things along with the Beatles? Absolutely, because you, ha you, can all, you, know, you have to talk about any kind of music, art, whatever it is, you've got to put it in the context of when it was done and what was going on, you know. So yeah, the course is about the 1960s. I mean, really, we talk about the 50s as well. I mean, the Beatles were little kids in the 1940s mm -hmm. and teenagers in the 50s, and 
than 20 odd year old international icons in the 60s. So we talk about all of that, but mainly about the 60s. So there's a lot of talk, we look at art, music, politics, all kinds of things, you know, civil rights, labor rights, women's rights, gay rights, everything happened in the 60s. Mm -hmm. So we get the opportunity to look at all of that while we're looking at the Beatles catalog. And in some cases, the Beatles music plays into specific things. In other cases, it doesn't. But it gives us an opportunity to look at the 1960s as a decade, which was a decade of just tremendous change in society and culture. And really, for the first time, issues were taken on uh, that we're still dealing with today. But it started then. Yeah. And a lot of it didn't work out. Some of it did. But, it, it, you know, it's... It's basically history now, it's cultural history, but it's history that informs our world today. So you ignore history, we ignore history to our peril. Lessons to be learned, you know, by looking at it. But a lot of, so much of what's going on today started in the, in the 60s, lots of things. Very cool. Yeah. Um, the students that are enrolling in this Beatles class, are they familiar with the Beatles or just yeah, Choose, well, that's, choosing a, it. that's a very good question because I assume that everybody is familiar with the right. Beatles and probably knows half of their songs, you know. Well, it's a couple of hundred songs. But um, yeah, in the first class meeting, uh, I found out that uh, my assumption was wrong. There were a couple of students said they'd never heard of a, a Beatles song, which turned out, of course, to be not true. Right. They just didn't realize because some of these songs are so iconic. And a lot of these songs are heard them, trending on TikTok right now. <laughs> exactly. They, they just keep coming back again and again. But yeah, um, I thought they would have been more familiar uh, mm -hmm. than they were. Now, some, some of the students were really familiar with, with most of it already, uh, but some not at all. So very interesting. Yeah, that, that is very interesting. Yeah. Um, so how did the Beatles actually impact and change society? Well, um, I don't think they change society directly in the way that a lot of people think. I don't think they were necessarily the driving force behind things. They became symbols. Things got attached to them. Um, for example, they didn't really write protest songs. For example, they didn't write any anti-Vietnam stuff, really. I mean, one song towards the end. They didn't take on civil rights in a direct way. You know, because they were trying to make a lot of money and they thought they'd be out of a job the next day. So they were very diplomatic in that way. But they were emblematic of a new thing, which was youth culture, which didn't exist before. It started out in the 50s as a result of an economic boom after the Second World War. And for the first time, uh, there was a, the concept of the young person or the teenager before this, it was children and adults. Now we had this other group. And they had pocket money and, and part-time jobs. And um, it became commercialized. And the money that they spent was essentially on their own style of music, their own style of dress. So the Beatles became very uh, emblematic of young people doing something you know, tremendous in the culture. It's hard to imagine uh, what that must have been like at the time. Um, of course, there's things, so, and, and they were working class guys, basically. You know, they didn't go to college. Um, possibly could have. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they weren't dumb, yeah. <laughs> that's for sure. They were smart. But they were pretty much working class guys, and they were obsessed with music and rock and roll and wearing leathers and jeans, and they were pretty rough and ready guys which you wouldn't know when you see them with their nice suits on later, you know. But um, they kind of represented uh, a real big sh a shift in the kind of establishment where working class, even young people, can actually not work in a factory, but do something. Right. Do something remarkable. So how old were the Beatles in their prime? Well, when the Beatles quit, George Harrison was 27. He was only 27 wow. when they quit. So that's crazy to that's think about. That's nuts. It's nuts. Yeah. They were like children. Mm -hmm. Except they'd been working as professional musicians since they were about 16. So they were a lot older. They'd seen a lot more of life. Yeah. You know. Um, but yeah, so there's that. But then, of course, we have things that were going on. Um, well, the drug culture. So, 
you know, drugs have been around forever. I mean, I know that Sherlock Holmes is a fictional character. You read the books, he was an opium addict. <laughs> so drugs were around, amphetamines for truck drivers and things like this. But marijuana became a thing in the 60s. It, became in, it came into the mainstream and the Beatles were really at the, not at the very beginning of it, but they became kind of flag bearers mm -hmm. for that. And then when psychedelia came, LSD, they all did that. And, you know, somebody, uh, some interviewer asked Paul McCartney directly in an interview about it. So he just said, yeah, I've taken it. And no they shame. said, well, don't you think that's irresponsible to be telling all these young people? And he goes, well, you're asking me the question. Don't ask me the question. <laughs> but so there was that as well. They were certainly involved in that. I'm not an advocate of drug taking. A um, lot of dangers there. Um, they were also became uh, associated with this kind of peace and love thing, especially with that All You Need Is Love song mm -hmm. that was broadcast all over the world simultaneously. You know, they had a few days to write a song and that's what they wrote. So this kind of hippie-ish peace and love that took off the next year. Um, but mainly, uh, they were musicians, they were songwriters, they were obsessed with music. They'd spent their entire lives just obsessing with music. They'd, they'd um, never had any formal training. They'd learned hundreds and hundreds of songs by ear and played them in these gigs in Germany. They, they would play every night, six to eight hours. Imagine how much stuff. Wow. And they just absorbed all this music by ear. Uh, uh, rhythm and blues stuff, rock and roll, obviously. Uh, Motown, American Go group kind of stuff. Uh, novelty songs, musicals, classical, all kinds of things. Did it all by ear and, by the and played it. And by the time they got the record deal, their heads were just full of music. And they had a, some knack of being able to um, mix these genres together. So, you know, their songs are actually not really one thing. They're funny mixtures mm -hmm. of, of things. And then they have this incredible drive to keep forging ahead and do something new, something new, something new. And they just kept going yeah. <laughs> until they could no longer tolerate each other. Wow. <laughs> you know, well, they all got, they were married. And right, tensions right. tensions and business troubles and, and stuff. But it was a seven year career. It's, it's crazy Everybody. that it was only seven years. Like it's nuts. just looking at their legacy now, kind of what they've built. Do you think there's anyone currently in today's culture that kind of even compares to them? You know, so Taylor Swift, right, recently had, I think it was the, 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 the top 15 slots, right, from her recent album, right. one, two, all the way through. So the Beatles were the ones before, I think they had the top 10 or something, maybe, she got 15. But is Taylor Swift a songwriter of the power and originality of the Beatles? Now, I'm not going to say if she is or not, but... Um, Will we be listening to those songs and talking about them in a college course in 60 years? Very true. Probably not. Yeah, probably not. Now, the Beatles were, of course, the first, really, in all of this as well. So they made it up. It's very original what they did, because there wasn't really a precedent. And there's a power in that. They must have been very excited, knowing that they were doing stuff that was new and that people loved it. That had never been done before. Spurred them on. Not, not done in the way they did it. Right. You know, um, and there's, I think, 180-something songs originally composed that they wrote during wow. those seven years. It, it's an um, astonishing amount of stuff. But um, not only did they create that amazing, that incredible successful uh, catalogue of songs, it was amazingly influential. And you won't find many musicians around today who won't just readily admit how much they were inspired and influenced and loved this Beatles music. Um, occasionally, somebody will say they don't like it, and I just think they're not quite telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> they're just kind of going yeah. against what everybody else is saying. But yeah, I mean, they just influenced everybody. And so if they hadn't have been around, I wonder what would have happened. Yeah. You know, music would definitely be different. Mm -hmm. For sure, you know. Of course, it'd still be pop music. I don't know who we would be talking about at yeah, this point. <laughs> um, Motown was around, and 
Stax Records, Soul Music, oh, that was around. Rock and roll had gone away, died. It wasn't, didn't exist. By the time the Beatles came along, it had gone. Uh, they kind of brought it back. Yeah, so um, progressive rock, rock music, who knows what, what, you know, where things would be now without them. Yeah, one of my earliest memories of music uh, was when Jesse McCartney covered Blackbird Oh, yeah. by them, and that's really kind of how I yeah. learned who the Beatles were, probably not until I was now, a teenager. Now, this is a, an interesting song, actually, because well, it's just Paul McCartney, right, with the guitar tapping his foot. And it was only, this is an example of what you were asking about earlier, about the influence they had. and what. So this is a good example of a song that Paul McCartney wrote that at the time nobody realized what he was writing about. It was only much later, maybe 20 years ago, when he started talking about what he was thinking about, but didn't dare be so overt about it. He said it was uh, specifically written about the black civil rights situation in the States. And that's the black bread is there, mm -hmm. you know, a black woman. So, uh, but, you know, they didn't feel they could be that kind of controversial, really. They kind of kept things a bit to themselves, but they were definitely thinking about it. Right, and then they are able to talk about it years later. Yeah, so it's incredible, you know, that's a song that Paul McCartney probably um, wrote in 30 minutes and recorded it and that's it. That's Move insane. On. And all this, you know, time later we're still talking about it. That is, that's absolutely crazy. Um, do these types of things surprise the students in this class? Do they understand the impact that the Beatles had at that time? Yeah, I, I think that some of the students, I think were already pretty well versed in, in the Beatles, though they probably didn't have the full gamut of, of what it was about. Some of the students were not very familiar with the Beatles at all, but uh, by the end of it, well, certainly they knew every single song, but we talked about all the lyrics and we talked about all the society and cultural things that were going on. So, uh, yeah, I think um, they, they, they would have been surprised about just how much was going on mm -hmm. in that period. You know, I mean, everybody's heard a bit about Charles Manson, a bit about maybe the Merry Pranksters, or uh, a bit about Vietnam War protests, but the full gamut of it, you know, it's really huge and, and powerful. And that's, and, you know, for me, I mean, it's interesting just talking about the Beatles, but it's also very interesting just looking at that decade and just looking at what happened, what was going on. So yeah, the students, I had them writing about this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, they had to pick some of these things and talk about them. Uh, and like I say, you know, um, it connects through to, to, to today. So many of these issues are still the same ones that are being debated, mm -hmm. fought for, you know, this kind of thing. Very cool. Um, well, we are going to kind of wrap up this um, episode with one final question. Yeah. What is your favorite Beatles song? Yeah, well, it's impossible, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so many options. It's just impossible. There's a Beatles song that... Um, you, you always have these kind of Rolling Stone magazine polls of the greatest song ever written and things like this, you know. Industry polls where producers and songwriters will vote and everything. And there is a Beatles song that tends to get voted the best song ever. And it's a song called In My Life, which you may not know. I don't, um, I don't think so. You probably know it if you heard it. I don't think it was ever released as a single. You know, it's just on one of the albums, uh, maybe the fourth or fifth record, something like that. Um, there's something about that song. It's John Lennon. He's only probably 24 or something. And he's already singing about all the people in his life that are dead already. His best friend, his mother... You know, singing this deeply uh, <clears throat> um, nostalgic song. You know, it's so sad and poignant. Um, that's one of my favorites. But there's just, I have tons of favorites. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Yates, for uh, kind of sharing with us why the Beatles are still important to this day and um, why these students should take this class. Thanks very much for asking me. It's, it's great to be able to talk about it. Absolutely. Yeah.